decision of this board that due to the lack of sufficient information from the property partners, this board is unable to approve this application without the proper reports being submitted to us so we can go over them and view them, uh, being the village uh, building inspector and the fire department. After that is, after the board would direct them, then they would uh, Notify you again of another hearing. We have a second for that motion. I second the motion. Mr. Wise Mr. Wise Casas? Aye. Mr. Engler? Aye. Mr. Ank? Aye. Mr. Gillis? Aye. Mr. Munoz? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. The motion has been made in the hearing. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, furthermore, Mr. Joel, um, since you've informed us that you've been using the, uh, this property for the past two months, we're advising you that it would appear that you're in violation of our business code for the village for operating business without a license, so we just want you to be aware of that act. Go to Gima. We're advising you that since you've told us you have been already operating your business in that property without a business license, we're in advising you that it appears you are in violation of the village business rules. Can I say something? Sure. Um, we, we have a, a kind of lease agreement, and since we had the lease agreement, we came to the village to uh, apply for the permit. Uh, and that, that is uh, what we did because we know that we have to have a permit to use that, to, to be able to use the place. And that is why we came in the first instance to set up, a, uh, to uh, request for a permit. And then it takes a process. It has taken at least the last uh, 30 days or that's uh, why is that. And then I don't know if there is any, because uh, I was asked a question if we have done this somewhere else before. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the church I belong to before in Desplaine, Illinois, it's called Living Spring. Uh, it's called uh, Fountain of Life Church. We, this is the same process we went through. And I am very, very familiar with the process. I do respect the decision of the board, but what I don't know is that the information or that is being, that is said not to be adequate, is it from us or from any other source? It's from the proper inspectors that need to inspect the premises. The inspectors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not from you. But I was referring to actually conducting your business there without, without a business license. Yeah, that's, that, that's like I explained earlier on, we, we did that because we uh, had intention and which is what we went, uh, followed through with applying for a permit. And that, I don't think that since we had the intention to <coughs> seek for permit, and which we actually did, and that is why we are here today. That is, the, that is the purpose of uh, our coming here today. Uh, you cannot operate a business until you are given permission to do so. In the I, village of Midlothian, I'm, I don't know where you did before, and I can't speak for the ordinance, because I don't know, okay. I don't understand. But if you apply for an operation to, and there are no restrictions, but you're talking about a public gathering place, there are certain requirements 
that have to be met. And until those requirements are met, you cannot operate your church. Okay. It's our recommendation. You can do whatever you want to do, but I, you are very close to being in violation. If the village finds out that you are operating your business without a permit, you could be very subject to some very stiff fines. And yeah. this is only our recommendation. We're trying to help the operator. I understand. I you could see that uh, I I am a law abiding citizen. If you look at if you look at it, I've had my business in the, in the village of Midota for six and a half years. By May this year, it will be seven years that I've been operating Royal Home Health Institute, uh, Royal Home Health Services in the village of Milota. I was formerly occupying the property at 14810 South Cicero Avenue. So I am a good citizen here. And uh, we have good intentions here. I, I need the board to know that. And uh, beside the fact that we, the church is something that uh, has a lot of positive side of it. Uh, for example, we have programs that we help the, the students community here, the high schools. We have scholarship intention for the high school in the city of village of Midotia. These are good things that we have here. We have. We are very, very law abiding. We are good citizens. And I present to you tonight that there should be no fear of anything. We are very, very law abiding. And then, above all, we, are, we brought in the gospel into the, into the village. I know there are a lot of churches around here. I know that. And then the village has a lot to gain from our presence here. I just want to present that to the board members so that you, you did when okay. you did when you applied for the application. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, we're not questioning your good intentions, and we're certainly not trying to discourage you. We're trying to protect the village as far as a group of people being in a, in a building that might not be safe should an emergency occur. That's our main concern. So that when we said that we need more inspections from the fire department, the building department is for the safety of your people that you have there too. Okay. We're certainly not questioning your ability or your you know your purpose to be there. So. Okay. So what is the next step from here? So we are going to notify the village board of our recommendation. They will advise their inspectors to go out and make a thorough inspection. They will advise us and then the village board will get back to you and we will have another hearing to, to complete the process. Okay. So they will the village board will advise you. We're only Recommend a recommendation to the board. We're not the final word either way. We make our recommendation, and then the village board and the trustees, they're the ones that would actually make the decision. Is that going so to we're just tabling it. We're not, we're not denying it. We're just postponing it until we feel that it's uh, an adequate safety for the board. Okay. Uh, is there going to be any other hearing uh, apart from this? Yes, we'll advise you after those, we get the reports of those inspections, the village board will give them to us and then we will advise you and we will, yes, have another here. All right. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Gracias. Si necesitan la estrellada, yo los puedo trasladar. Oh, okay. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Señor Secretario, we still have a form. Okay. For the next petition, we have some exhibits also. Uh, the, the reason for the, uh, uh, the hearing is to rezone a number of parcels uh, to, from, from uh, B3 community commercial to R3 single family attached. Uh, exhibit A is uh, uh, address 14817 Cicero Avenue. Uh, exhibit B, 14718 Menard. Uh, I'm sorry, 14821 Cicero Avenue. Exhibit C, 14831 Cicero Avenue. Exhibit D, 14845 Cicero. Exhibit E is 148.27 Cicero. Exhibit F is 47.42 149th Street. Exhibit G is 47.36 149th Street. Exhibit H is 47.34 149th Street. Exhibit I 148.22 Keating. Exhibit J, 14818 Keating. Exhibit K, 14822 Keating. And that is the end of the actual address. This is going to be addressed tonight. Exhibit L, two pages, is the property search results for uh, all these, uh, all these pro various properties that have been mentioned. Exhibit M of the Village of Midlothian Site Plan Review Committee minutes, uh, the hearing that they had, the meeting that they had concerning this rezoning. Exhibit H is the Daily South Town Legals, uh, the legal notice to, that went into the paper, uh, and uh, also the, uh, the the notice of the hearing on March on today, March 30th at 6 p.m. Exhibit O is the Chicago the Tribune. Uh, South Town uh, actual ad that went into the paper, legal notice, and uh, exhibit P is the receipt of that uh, of that uh, notice in the paper. And that's, and that's all the all these gifts. Board, does anyone have some questions? Is there any resident here that has who would like to be heard in regards to? Well, um, we are um, appropriate seat of 148.27. Uh, we presented our case uh, last time. Um, it's been a hard time for us um, this time. Right now, we, like parents, are living in the basement with our four young kids. Mm -hmm. And we come, we come um, a lot of time to the village to try to keep going with the project. We present, mm -hmm. uh, we present already the, um, the blueprint. Mm -hmm. And they're telling they're tell us everything was uh, going to very well. But now uh, we feel so frustrating because we are like in the limbo. We don't know what's going on in this because they're tell what we come one day and they tell us one thing. First, uh, they tell us that we can do it. And now they tell us no because uh, we go like four inches uh, up in the the high Is that the village board telling you or the building department was telling you that? The building. The, the building department, okay. And uh, we, we don't try to go over a line or anything, mm -hmm. break the rules or anything. You know? No, I understand. And, I, and, and I, you know, I, the architect, you know, he, I told him, you know, if this a problem going high, the only reason the architect, he wants us to go a little bit higher, because in, in the basement I have a furnace that angle you know, it's not, it's an old furnace, so he wanted to put on, on, on the edit, you know, going down to be warmer. So, and he told me, you know what, if it's a problem, here is the, the other one, the, he, he, he loaded down at the same height, you know. So if there's any problem going high, or, you know, we just want to try and leave 
uh, leave it safe, you know, and do it right, you know. So just want to make it home for our kids. So. Yeah, we're just having to please ask you your help. We are parents and we're trying to get a place to live with our kids. Mm -hmm. And when the first time when we come here, we, we uh, feel very welcome with the neighbors. We, we most uh, know all the, all the neighbors almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're very nice. Mm -hmm. We feel very happy, but all oh, this is so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Like a family that's affecting us in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Our children, uh, we get asleep because we are like, how long we been live in this basement? We have a problem. We spend, we spend so much money. Yeah. Now, really, so we don't have. We just come here to ask for help. Are there any other residents here from yes. the area? Yes. Yeah. 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 Can I ask you a question? If you remember the last time we were here for the hearing, yeah. we were, we told you at that time that we wanted to help you in any way, shape that we could. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I talked to you and told you about the height variance. Yeah, we all talked to you. Right. And you know, when, when I went and picked up the blueprint, the architect, he already raised it up and he told me, you know, if it's a problem, we change it. And I got it here. He, he changed it for me. Well, what we're trying to do is rezone it mm -hmm. so you can change the height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not yeah. a problem. Oh, 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 oh. That's the purpose of the series. Oh. Oh. If those, the rest of your neighbors and that don't have any objection, and our recommendation would be that we, yeah, I know. <laughs> according to, according to, I'm not going to make a positive recommendation. <laughs> I'm not making a pot. I don't want you to feel discouraged. Okay, I told you that the last time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I just want. Oh, you go ahead. I just wanted to say that I, I, I presume that a lot of the other residents uh, have concerns about their own future if they want to make improvements, either for themselves or for a uh, resale. That they would be doing if the zoning didn't do it is that in fact you're feeling at this time that you need it in place so that you can go forward with any projects you may have in your mind or on your table at this time. Well, can I just say one thing? Sure. If it, I, I assume this is to be okay because, like, if we went residential, we can have sidewalks brought on and do siding on the house, which are two things I need to do now myself, you know. So there would be no problem with that. There well, would be no problem with zoning on that. I can't tell you about the zoning, but I, it's going to, I can't tell you what the exact zoning is, but you could direct that question to proper people. Well, there's that. two projects that I would like to do this summer. One is to get a sidewalk around the house, and one is to put some siding on the house. Well, again, that would be done through the building department. Okay, I okay. can't make that suggestion, but what, uh, Mr. Enright was trying to say was that it's going to be easier for you if everybody came together and said, yes, we'd like to go from uh, business to residential. Right. And that was our concern whether all the residents felt that way. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say what's better than better. Okay. But if that's what you feel, then yeah. that's what we have to figure out. Yeah. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Would there be any difference in the property values? If it did change the zoning? Well, in, ter in terms, I suppose, uh, other than zoning, if it was changed to a residential and then you made improvements on your own property without any encumbrance at all, then obviously the property value is going to go up. You know, no, I just house. mean if to change in zoning, it's not going to change the uh, our property values at all. Real estate taxes, you're talking about real estate taxes? Real estate taxes yeah. or, their, or your property value? I, I don't think we can trust that because that's yeah. not. Yeah. Not to my knowledge, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I really don't see why. But I think if you know. It, the only time it would really hurt you is if you had to sell to a business and they wanted to give you a price. You'd probably do better as a resident. In my opinion, if it was my property, right. that's why. That's not our. But it's not a recommendation. We have to go through the board. We're really going to address just the change in zoning at this time. We'll, 
you could take any other questions you have up with the, the village boards at the time it becomes on their, on their docket. Right. Okay. I'd like to order Jennifer's question. Oh, Gary. I'm sorry, I'd Is it okay with the board if I take yes, it? Yes, yeah. All right, I just came to give a few cents. You know, I, I, it sounds like I probably don't have to, but my name is Gary LaRue, village trustee. It, it doesn't, those tracks of houses being zoned business doesn't really seem to be benefiting the village of Mulfin at this point. We have still a number of vacant storefronts, uh, vacant commercial land. If everything was filled and we had developers still knocking down our door, uh, I could see us trying to take a track of homes and make it business on, on a stretch like Cicero. But at this point, uh, this family's just trying to make a home for their four children and, uh, you know, they live here a long time. You know, the American dream, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.